pray. Heavenly Father, again, we're happy to gather together in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting we might glorify your name somehow, some way, knowing, Lord, that you have already glorified it by the ministry that we have seen set forth amongst us, which corroborates and vindicates the word that was given to us to this hour. So we are not a people who are not understanding and knowledgeable concerning these things of the last day, but rather know by this very vindication that our faith has come to a place of perfection that we can believe. Not only all things are possible concerning those realms which have to do with here in our private lives on this earth, but far beyond it, Lord, the catching away of a bride, transforming people here in this hour, in this world, Lord. These things we know are ours at this moment, Father. Now we commend ourselves to you tonight in the study of your word. May it be a gracious study of your word, Lord. May it do us good. May we understand more. And in our understanding, Lord, live more complete lives that glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned, we're not going to continue with the Satan's Eden at this particular time, but we'll be back to that tomorrow morning. And I just want to bring a little message based on two words that Brother Branham used, one of which was Messiah and Messiahs. And I don't know just exactly how far that can be taken by people uh, or how far it is taken by people. But <clears throat> let's just read. If I've got a little bit here, maybe I can read. Uh, a portion where um, oh, I guess I don't have what I really wanted here but Brother Branham was mentioning well here this is this I can read this here I was Brother Branham in talking about identification he asked the people how many American citizens and they raised their hands and he said you are identified with this nation and considering his own identification, he said, I was with George Washington when he crossed the Delaware. I'm identified with him. That's right. I was with Abraham Lincoln at the Gettysburg Address. I was standing there. I was with the soldiers on Guam, you boys, when you host hoisted that flag. I was there. I'm an American. I'm identified with it. Amen. Now to be an American, whatever her shame is in the Revolutionary War, I bear it because I'm an American. That's right. And as a Christian, I'm identified with him. Amen. I was with Noah when he went in the ark. I was with Moses when he came out of Egypt. Amen. I was with Elijah on Mount Carmel. Yes, sir. Glory to God. I was with him when he did that. I was truly with him. Identified uh, myself in his death there on Calvary <clears throat> when I died to the things of the world, to myself and all traditions. I was identified with him. I was identified with him on Easter morning when he rose from the dead. I was identified with him the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came down like a rushing mighty wind. I was identified with him. All that he was, I am. All that I am, he was. Now, that's just a repeat of the same thing, but different phraseology. All that, I, all that he was, I am. Amen. Being dead in him, we are identified with him. What he is, I am. Amen. Now, <clears throat> As I said a minute ago, that before I read this, Brother Branham mentioned the fact, one time he said, you're Mrs. Jesus. Another time he said, you are Messiahs. Now, if you look at the thought of Messiah and Messiahs, uh, you're going to realize that there is a position to be taken with what Brother Branham said, which is with the word and which is not on either side of the road, and taking a person into a ditch. Now, <clears throat> instantly, you come against two groups of people. One group is not happy to have the statement made because they simply don't want to identify to the extent that the Scripture indicates, and not only indicates, but positively sets forth. Such as it says in 2 Corinthians, uh, the fifth chapter, <clears throat> that we have become the righteousness of God through him. Now, that's a very, very strong statement that uh, I don't know how many actually take it. To literally put themselves in the position 
that the word of God through the apostle Paul and vindicated put the Corinthian true bride into that actual position where Paul said that we have become the very righteousness of God. <clears throat> so I'm going to use the board here, and I guess maybe I'll try to skirt my way around here. And I think i got to bring it forward a bit, right? Is that all right? Are we okay? And uh, I'm not a very good writer. <laughs> I sort of can... Um, <clears throat> Let me see. Get me a color here that'll... I don't think it's going to do you any good for the color to hold up because yeah, unless you got X, you got telescopic eyeballs, <coughs> you're not going to see too good. Now, what we're going to do is definitely start and try to give us a picture, first of all, that will bring us into a position of Messiah and Messiahs. Then we'll go from there and begin to discuss a little more of what it entails <clears throat> in order to get what Brother Branham said and then bring it down to the places where uh, you will find that it'll be perfectly scriptural if you know what you're saying and why you're saying it that a man like Brother Branham as a prophet could literally be a mediator. Now, it doesn't say he's the mediator, but actually becoming one in the sense of that particular position and the need of the hour or what is required. Now, remember Brother Branham, specifically speaking of identification, is identifying himself, first of all, with the American nation then he's identifying himself with the kingdom of God and with the king. Because the great king is going to take his throne day. <clears throat> All right, so we'll start up here and we'll put this. What God is is spirit God. All right, now as a spirit God, we start with Isaiah uh, 44 and 6. <clears throat> now, I haven't got these all written down, but... We can turn to Isaiah 44 and 6, and we can see for ourselves exactly where we are starting, and because this is the major point. Okay, thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and the last, and beside me there is no God. Okay, he said, there's nobody before me, <clears throat> there's nobody beside me, and there is nobody after me. Okay, also... This is where we get John 4 and 24. And it says, God is spirit. <clears throat> we also know that Jesus himself not only said God is spirit, but he said there is one God. And that God is spirit, positively and absolutely. Now, <clears throat> coming down from here, we're going to look at the fact of there is a son of God. Now, we know that this is positively true. And we'll go kind of this way over here. And we'll just work along with it because I want to show you something in here where the creator comes in here, creator. Now, don't forget we're going to go with that line there. So there's the Son of God. <clears throat> and first, and with this, we go to John 1 and 18. Now, we know that John 1 and 18 says that uh, <clears throat> the only begotten, the Father, uh, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten who is in the bosom of the Father has thoroughly led him forth or declared him or led him forth by words, has brought him forth very, very carefully. And with this also, we get Hebrews 1 and we get 2 and 3. <clears throat> now, you're all familiar with Hebrews 1, 2, and 3, but because I, ne I haven't pretended to memorize this, nor have I any hopes of memorizing it, <clears throat> and not asking you to do it, we're going to read it. Hath in these days, speaking of God, in the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us, in his Son, or in the Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now keep that in mind. <clears throat> Who being the brightness uh, of his glory, that's the effulgence or the outraying of his glory, the express image or the expression of his substance, and upholding all things by the word of his power, then from that point it goes on to him going into the incarnation. <clears throat> now, that tells you who the Son is. And with that, we have Psalms 
two and seven. That's not 17, that's two and seven. So, we go back to the second psalm, which we have taken previously. <clears throat> and by the way, there's very little mention of the, of the, of the, so, of the Son of God in, in, the, in the Old Testament. <clears throat> 2 and 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. <clears throat> now, what we're noticing here uh, positively is the fact of the pre-existence of the Son as having begotten of God, as Brother Branagh said, before there was a speck of stardust, anything was a motion of air, any movement whatsoever, there was this light that emanated and came forth from God. He says, as a child playing around the Father's throne, and then he began to describe some of those things that were there. So, all right, <clears throat> we put a little sign here, a little mark there from Psalm 2 and 7. <clears throat> we go to John. That's John 17 and 5, which, of course, is concerning his prayer. And also we go to Philippians 2, 5 and 8. Now, you've been over this with me, but it's all right <clears throat> to go over it again. So, I we go back to John 17 and the... Uh, Fifth verse, he said, oh, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. <clears throat> now, be very careful to notice the words in here that Jesus said, because that's what's important. He's the only one that knew what went on. No other son of God knew what went on. He was not allowed to know it. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the foundation of the world. <clears throat> In other words, he's talking of a very distinct relationship. All right, just keep that in mind. That's 17 and 5. Now, Philippians, the second chapter. And this comes into the <clears throat> place where this one here we're speaking of becomes incarnate. All right. Philippians, the second chapter, beginning at 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, <clears throat> what he's doing here is drawing an example from Christ, his thinking pertaining himself, and then we are to reverse it in order to think what is right concerning ourselves. Now, you just watch that, but that's not the subject. Let this mind be in you also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not a prize to be grasped and retained to be equal with God, <clears throat> but emptied himself and made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. <clears throat> now, you notice in here that this is a pre-incarnate person. This is an individual and is called Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and he evidently had a glory with the Father personally that he wanted restored. Now, this one who had that emptied it. In other words, he deliberately laid it aside. He did not continue in what he was, but now he takes upon himself a form that he did not have previously, <clears throat> which evidently was a form of humiliation in contrast to what it was. In other words, it was not truly commensurate with who he was, but it was necessary for what he would do for others. Now, that's what you're looking at, see? And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became a being death, <clears throat> even the death of the cross. Now, with this, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at exactly what the Scripture says about him. Now, we've got to go over here where creation comes in. Now, in this particular point, <clears throat> you will notice here, John 1, 1 to 3. Now, <clears throat> with that, we go to Ephesians 3 and 9. <clears throat> now, this, this really is very simple. In, we go to, to John 1 then. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. 
Now that Brother Branham categorically said, if you make that Jesus, you are a Trinitarian. <clears throat> so don't go fooling around. Don't try to begin to adapt your thinking to other than the Scripture. One God. Now watch. This one God, it says, all things were made by him, and without him there was not anything made that was made. <clears throat> now he's not talking about Jesus. He's not talking about this son's incarnation. He's not doing that. <clears throat> the scripture is setting forth this God who absolutely was the creator. Now, let's go to the third chapter of the book of Ephesians and in the ninth verse, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Christ Jesus. <clears throat> God did the creating. It tells you. And he did it by means of Christ Jesus. The same as, look, I'm, I'm speaking by way of a microphone, an amplification system, and tape recordings and everything else. But I'm the one that's doing it. Now, Chad's recording it there, and so is Gene, but they're not doing it. I'm doing it. <clears throat> and the microphone isn't doing it, and the loudspeaker's not doing it. I'm doing it. And this is that glory that Jesus had from the beginning. <clears throat> this, this complete participation in a unity and a oneness. And it's not Trinitarian doctrine. And it's not oneness, and, and it is not Tunis doctrine. It is straight scriptural doctrine that Paul said for it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it said God by Jesus Christ created all things. So God was not able to do anything on his own according to his own wisdom. And his own fulfillment. Now I know you can't understand that and I can't eat it because our fulfillment in the world is you know, like one what the movie some movie star said and I, I suppose he said right he said all I ever wanted out of life he said <clears throat> was to grow up and make a whole lot of money get married and have a good family and die without pain. That's about all you and I know. But when it comes to God fulfilling himself we don't know the first thing about it. Jesus being there and privy to everything God would think and do or desire to do. That was a fabulous glory. And he participated and God allowed him to participate and it was God in that son. Now the Bible says so, so don't try to rack your brain about it. You follow what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay. Let's take this down here now. We got, we got into Philippians in that particular portion. So we go to Hebrews 1 and 6. <clears throat> now this is settled. You understand? Okay. Now, where are, we, where are we going? Hebrews 1 and 6. <clears throat> and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, that's the inhabited world. He said, let all the angels worship him. <clears throat> now, there's a difference between Psalms and this one. This is where he comes into the inhabited world. <clears throat> so, there's something now set before him. He comes into the position of incarnation, which is very, very difficult to understand, but the point is we have to just believe it and go on. All right, the next thing we're going to look at here is Matthew 16. And we, we all know Matthew 16, 13 to 16. <clears throat> and with that also, well, we'll go down a little later. <clears throat> but we go to Matthew, the 16th chapter, and 13 to 16. It said, when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? <clears throat> now, right there, he's telling you, Who am I, not the Son of God? That goes way back to prehistory, <clears throat> although it doesn't go back to prehistory as concerning God. It goes back to where God allows some history to come into evidence. <clears throat> okay, 
Who do people say that I, the son of man, am? Who am I as a man? Who am I if I am that prophet that Moses said was to come? You're looking at the humanity now. And they said, some say you're John the Baptist, some Elijah, some Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Now, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Why did that bunch of yo-yos begin to believe in transmigration of soul or reincarnation? Now, they must have believed in reincarnation. <clears throat> Where'd they get it from? Where's the scripture for it? How far had they gone from God in the 2,000 years from the time of Moses? 400 years from the time of Isaiah? How long from Malachi? I won't remember. But not very long. <clears throat> How far had they gone? The answer is they were just as messed up as we are. Wretched, miserable, naked, blind, and didn't even know it. Had all kinds of theories and all kinds of ideas, and none of them was according to Scripture. And he said, but, well, he said, forget it, forget it. But how, who do you say that I am? Can I get a good answer out of my crowd? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, I want to tell you, Peter, right now, you're right. And nobody but nobody but God showed you because nobody else today would even know it. <clears throat> they were completely blind to this one. <clears throat> now, here we find him as the Son of Man. He is the Christ. Now, Christ is nothing more than Messiah. <clears throat> so, if I were to put up here, which I could have put at the top, Messiah and Messiahs, E-T-T-S, I'd have to put over here then Christ, Christ and Christinas <clears throat> because Christos is the word in the Greek for Christ or Messiah or <clears throat> Savior, whatever you're going to look forward to. So now, we have him here before us as the Son of Man, who is the Christ. He is the anointed one. A very, very special person <clears throat> who, as the Scripture says, the kingdom will never depart from him. Or well, right away, you know, the fellow's got to be immortal. Doesn't say now his progeny. <clears throat> doesn't say that. The Bible said this one doesn't have a seed to see. The seed is going to come forth out of the ground. He's going to bring him forth by a blood sacrifice <clears throat> and raising his own elect. So we're looking at this one that is the Christ. We're looking at this one who is in the form of a human being. Now, take this back to you and me. We are in the form of human beings. All right, now how do you get from Christ to Christina's or Messiah to Messiah. All right. <clears throat> we'll go down here <clears throat> to 2 Corinthians 5. What do we want? We want 18 and 19. <clears throat> okay. 2 Corinthians 5. And all things are of God. Who? hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word <coughs> of reconciliation. You follow? Now listen. Now then we are ambassadors <clears throat> for Christ. We have been deputized <clears throat> and brought into the forces of God in order to bring in the children of God into the kingdom. In other words, every single person <clears throat> has been given an actual ministry of reconciliation based upon 
what was actually consummated. What was, <clears throat> well, it was consummated, absolutely set forth. <clears throat> and the Word makes you, by virtue of a living Word, a reconciler. So here's how we're looking from the top to the bottom and finding ourselves in this very particular and very nice position. Now notice as we go along, <clears throat> we're going to look at what is called the kenosis, which we read over here already in Philippians, the second chapter, <clears throat> and uh, verses 5 to 8. Let this mind be all in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not a prize, be grasped, retained, be equal with God. <clears throat> but made himself an order and took upon himself the form of servant as it was made in the likeness of men. <clears throat> now you can, you, as I said, you can take this as an illustration concerning the fact that we now reverse it. And we say, now we were in the fashion of man. And in this particular way, are looking forward now by the minds having been renewed <clears throat> to see ourselves in the same position as Jesus Christ in the robes of immortality. Not positioned as the man on the throne and the pillar of fire above the throne, <clears throat> but to take our place with him, as the scripture says, we shall see him as he is and will be just like him. Now, on the other hand, <clears throat> take a look at this. Can you believe what Brother Branham taught? That you and I were in him in the very beginning. And through no will of our own, though, we emptied ourselves of the theophonic form and came down here and took on a natural human form. Now, can you say that tonight and understand, let the mind of Christ be in you, that in Christ you must have had a volition to say yes. Because Brother Branham said, in him I died and in him I rose. And Paul says we were in him. <clears throat> so then can there not be the simplistic thought <clears throat> that I can accept the fact that even back there, though I know nothing of it, and in Calvary, though I know nothing of it, can I stand with the word of God and say yes? In that volition back there, I was glad to lay aside that form that I might come down here and suffer if that be the plan and the glory of Almighty God, that I might be what he wanted me to be, <clears throat> looking for that time, or now be glorified with him. Now, you can say that, and you wouldn't be far out. In fact, I say you'd be right with the word. Now, notice what he says here. He emptied himself. In other words, <clears throat> as Brother Branham said, and so many of them do say it's the same thing concerning the kenosis, <clears throat> that God poured everything of himself into Christ, where Brother Branham said that Jesus was the fullness of the attributes <clears throat> of Godhead bodily. <clears throat> That's what Paul says in the book of Hebrews, that he was the literal outraying of God and that he was literally the substance of God. What else could he be having come out of God? Oats comes out of oats. Wheat comes out of wheat. Cats come out of cats and dogs come out of dogs. Is it suddenly strange <clears throat> that God should not, when it came forth for the time of Christ to come forth in that very beginning, is it strange indeed that he was substance of substance? Well, there's something wrong with somebody's thinking if you think otherwise. That's all I'm going to say. You've lost all sense of logic and all sense of everything else. What else could he be <clears throat> except the very essentiality of Almighty God? Now, look what we understand here. According to the kenosis which Brother Branham preaches, preached, which was according to the students, which I don't care two bits about the students unless Brother Branham preached it. But he did preach the kenosis as others preach it. And that is as, as God emptied himself into Christ. <clears throat> now, we're talking about attributes. But we are, and we're, when we're talking about fullness of attributes, we are talking numerically. How many, not how much. You better believe that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have necessity for God being in Christ creating the world. It was God in him doing it, just the same as God in him reconciling. <clears throat> it is not how much, but how many. 
And so therefore he manifested every single thing in that particular number that was from him. Now listen, remember when you're looking at this, your eye must be more single to what we are speaking of, which is Messiah, which is the great Redeemer. <clears throat> we are not looking at the other features. We are looking at that which is going to bring back into reconciliation the true kingdom of God and all of its attributes into an immortal situation that people could only dream about, but one day we're going to have it. You follow what I'm saying? Okay, <clears throat> when you look at it that way, then you're looking into, as Brother Brano said with the rest of the students, Christ poured into the church what God had poured into him. <clears throat> then if he poured into the church or the bride what was poured into him, then that would constitute Messiahs or Christinas. In other words, it, there again, it would not be the quantity. It would be the quality <clears throat> and numerically. In other words, what was in him as for this very special occasion or reality. So the bride now stands in the position that he has granted her to be, as it says right here in Paul, in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, we've been deputized as ambassadors, whether we want to or not. The point is not can you be an ambassador. The point is you are an ambassador. And the point is are you gathering for him or gathering against him? <clears throat> and the point is are you for or do you think you can stand as though you could be <clears throat> neutral? There is no such thing as neutrality for he that does not gather for him is gathering against him. How then can people say these foolish things and be outside the scripture? <clears throat> We're not outside scripture. We got to say what the prophet said. He said, Messiah and Messiah, yes. Jesus and Mrs. Jesus. And remember, let's face it, as he came out of Adam, so the bride comes out of Christ. <clears throat> I know these are hard to recognize, but they are still the truth. Now, in this kenosis, which we see here, let's go back to Hebrews, <clears throat> the first chapter. <clears throat> what he poured in. Now, Hebrews 1, <clears throat> we're looking at verses 2 and 3 again. Hath these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, that's the ages, who being the effulgence, the outraying of his glory, and the expression of his person, his very essentiality, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Now remember, that is God in Christ. You cannot change the position because it's, there's no way to change it. <clears throat> now, let's go to John 14. <clears throat> We're going to see the actuality because, listen, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there were no changes in him, only in his mask. <clears throat> there were no changes. Now, in John 14, listen to what it says beginning in verse 8. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said, Have I been so long time with you, and you not yet known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak, and I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, <clears throat> the works that I do shall... He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater than these shall he do because I go to my Father. <clears throat> now, you're looking at the picture here, which is not a supposition, but a very correct picture. <clears throat> Jesus is saying, as the Father was in me in the beginning doing the works, saying the word, it's the same one in me now that is saying the word and doing the works. And he said, there's going to come a time when somebody will have a greater ministry than this by the very same authority in the very same measure in the very same way. <clears throat> now that's what Jesus said. God does not change his way. We understand that. Also, what God poured into Christ, Christ poured in the church. <clears throat> we said that. Let's go and take a look at it. We go to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 12 to 14, I suppose is what we want. 
For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one member, so is also Christ. Now it tells you right there. <coughs> You've got a many-membered body. <coughs> well, you say, well, what God poured into Christ definitely then would be his own spirit and his own power. That's true, and it is his own jurisdiction. But does that, does that lessen it? Does that lessen the body being a Messiah? Under no condition does it lessen it because he was identical. Amen. It tells you right here many members make one body. You can't argue that. Now it says, for by one spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether it be Jew or Gentile, whether bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is, <clears throat> is not one member but many. But it's yet, it's a one-member body on the ground that it constitutes one body. Now, where's your Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, and all the rest of it? So you can't do it. <clears throat> now, let's go to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. It tells you that we are the physical appurtenances of Jesus right on this earth. <clears throat> and have become a body. Now, what, what, what with us? What was poured into him? And what was in him qualified itself to the work <clears throat> that it was to accomplish. So the same with the bride. It never makes us, you and us, you and I, helter skelter, some kind of people that suddenly were Elohim. As some people try to say, we are the Elohim of God. And I guess if you just read the other day in the, uh, what is it, Times Magazine, I threw it in the garbage and I should have kept it. And read to you what the Pentecostals are saying. <clears throat> oh, you've got them telling me, we're God. We've got God in us. I think that's Hagen's doctrine. Oh, you're God's, the Bible says it. You're, you're not. It's, it's, that's not true. Little G is prophets. <clears throat> and then you become children of the prophets. We'll talk about that. But the people say the strangest things, and there's no scripture for it. Okay, also, <clears throat> look at Ephesians, the first chapter. 22 to 23, what it says, that put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in and all. There's the kenosis again. <clears throat> you can't get by it. There again is Messiah because that's what we're talking about. And there again you see the multiplicity of Messiahs making up the body Messiah. <clears throat> and it is set apart for the work of God for what? For the literal buying back. Now listen, get this. Literal buying back the kingdom of God to the people of God. And listen, Romans 8 teaches it that all creation is waiting for the manifestation of sons of God. And they're groaning and hungry. And when God's work is thoroughly done in us, for ours, benefits and all, and his work thoroughly done through us, generation after generation, there will come a time when the dead will come out of the ground, the living shall be immortalized, three and a half years of tribulation, <clears throat> wiping out of the entire civilization, and they'll be glad to get wiped out the way AIDS are going right now. And don't think it's anywhere under control. Because let me tell you flat, if you don't know this, you better read the reports and get it. The gays and the homosexuals are now standing still concerning AIDS. It is the heterosexuals that are booming. So kiss your families goodbye. Some of you young people sitting here, you will have AIDS if you don't smarten up. And some will have AIDS whether you do smarten up, unless you're a child of God. Because it can stay in garments, and it can stay for many hours in a dry form, and be wetted and come back. And don't let anybody tell you that the day won't come when it won't be carried by mosquitoes. <clears throat> they're lying and they're covering up. <clears throat> Just thought I'd throw it in. You might as well know the truth. All right. Let us also read now concerning this in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, <clears throat> and we've seen what's coming on. Watch the position the church has <clears throat> as the responsible Messiah 
made of Messiahs. <clears throat> and watch what God does. 1 to 16, I therefore the prison of the Lord, that's Ephesians 4, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body <clears throat> and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us, now watch, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now you watch right there. Everyone is given a measure of the gift of grace. Everyone is given a measure, but Christ had his without measure one person. <clears throat> the church is a mighty foe against Satan. The church is a dynamic factor in the kingdom of God. If each one began to believe his position as shown by Paul and revealed by the prophet. And nailed down by vindication, so you're not guessing any longer. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now, he that ascended, what is he also descended first in lower parts of the earth? The body did not go down there. The body was not in the lowest parts of the earth. <clears throat> it was merely on top of the ground in a cave. So what went down there? He preached to the spirits in spirit. He that descended is the same also that ascended far above heavens <clears throat> that he might fill all things. It wasn't the literal body that came back on the day of Pentecost. It wasn't the literal body that came back to the Apostle Paul. It was that spirit of life in Christ. That fullness that was in him. See, that's what came back in the pillar of fire. <clears throat> now, he that descended him also sent above our heavens that he might fill all things. It says the one that went down in the lower parts of the earth. He went right up there and he came right down again. And then the thing is after he dealt with the apostle Paul, he went back. And he wasn't seen for 2,000 years until they caught his picture right there. <clears throat> now that's something to think about. Oh, you'll be branded as insane for that. Who cares where? Ha, that's another thing about the AIDS. They won't tell you how many mental cases there are. They'll tell you about the carsopic, or the carposic cancer, that which rots you, where your face and body goes black. But they won't tell you how many mental cases there are today. Yeah. And they're doing everything those mental cases to destroy. And you know what? The politicians are going along with them. Homosexuality running the government like it was in the days of Lot. <clears throat> and you think God's going to spare this country? Come on, smarten up. You better get some fear in your, inside of your guts, let me tell you that. We've got one promise that shall not come nigh thee. 10,000 fall at thy right hand. <clears throat> you better keep your virtue. When I was just a kid, we were taught scare tactics. You're not taught scare tactics. You're taught how to get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. Amen. Tell your kids, go ahead. People can't stand my preaching. Oh, I wouldn't let that preacher veil talk to my kids. That's fine. You go to hell with your kids too. And you'll have AIDS getting there. Because the preachers won't pull the plug on it. Because they're a bunch of homos themselves. <clears throat> too many of them. That's right. Okay. Let's keep reading here. <clears throat> now, he that came down. And what did he do? He, here's, a, here's a ministry. He gave apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for perfect the saints for the work of the ministry, the edifying the body of Christ. Notice, it's all for the body till we come in unity of faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, unto mature man, unto measure the stature of fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried by the wind of doctrine by sleight of men and cunning crafts, by the line wake to deceive us, holding the truth in love. Paul the apostle admitted that in his very hour, in the Ephesian church, which he was about to be martyred and leave them, already they'd gone astray and were drifting. <clears throat> already the thraldom of unbelief and false doctrine had come in. And he said, it's not going to happen that you really get wind of the whole thing until it's time to close down. That's right. The end time has the final revelation. All right, so holding the truth and love may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined 
together and compacted. That's Messiah we're talking about. <clears throat> then what are the members and the joints? Like material. <clears throat> if he's word, we got to be word. If he's son of God, we got to be son of God. <clears throat> if he was way back there, we're way back there. You can't fool with the scripture. It says right here that there's only one time in the 2,000 years of the seven church ages <clears throat> that there's going to be a people who come to the full revelation. That's in the last church age when Christ leaves the church. It says, come on. You do what you want. I got no problem. I'm out. Thank God. None of the doctrines in me by the grace of God. I blew it out years ago. You want to be Pentecostal Baptist, you be what you want. <clears throat> be what you want. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Stick around me and I'll read you just like a book because I ain't got not, not that stuff in me anymore. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. If Paul the Apostle could call what he had done, I can double dung mine, I can tell you that. Yeah. Speaking the truth in love. <clears throat> the first time the truth will come in love, they won't understand it. Come on. Don't be fooled, brother, sister. Eight people made in the name of Noah. Eight people made it. I've got the hardest job in the world convincing you people to love is. You still don't believe me. Not what you think it is, what I would like to think it is. That's a bunch of human hogwash people talk and call love. Love is corrective. It hurts. It burns. It takes a stand and defies all hell. We'll talk about it. I'm got I listen. Tonight, you want to stay for two and a half more hours? We'll cover it. I won't keep you that long, don't worry. We'll just, we just, we don't cover, we'll take the rest of tomorrow morning. I'm not going to worry about it. Because <clears throat> we're halfway through now. Look at it. But speaking the truth in love, or holding the truth, may grow up in him in all things which is ahead, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied. <clears throat> in other words, what came down through the seven church ages to now with the opening of the seven seals, especially number seven, and the seven thunders brings us to a completion where the cementing will hold. And that bride will no more drift than nothing. And she won't be fooled by any spirit or any letter or any idea than by nothing. <clears throat> Why? Because everything from this point is effectual. It wasn't when Paul preached it. It wasn't under Arrhenius, nor Columba, nor Martin, nor Luther, nor Wesley. It wasn't. It's only today. What they had was effectual to the one point. <clears throat> Even in Luther's day, you've got a name that you live, but you're dead. You've got a little strength, watch it. Just before him was Jezebel the prophet, the Catholic Church in the Dark Ages. Then came Methodism. Then came Pentecost. But now today, it's the only time the anchor is going to hold, brother, sister. And I don't care if every homosexual runs all the governments, they can have it. The funny thing is only the heathen, so-called heathen nations, <clears throat> are not letting them run the government and have their way. They're going to bankrupt <clears throat> every insurance company. You watch, brother, sister. You say, Brother Vale, isn't there other things? There are other things. Yes, there are other things. But this is the big thing. Because this means spiritual death is hand in hand. <clears throat> Listen. Make it increase of every part, working in the measure of every part. Make it increase the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Notice, holding the truth in love and coming up in love. Then what kind of love does the bride have in contradistinction to the world? Now, come on, think this, this, after this evening, brother, sister. Come on, think, put your thinking caps on. Get with me. I, I, I don't know how much faith I got, just be honest. For myself or anybody anymore. It bugs me because I say, for anything, do this, do that. You can't put themselves out. 
Where in the world are you going to come in the end time? What about the passing of Jordan? If the green tree is now, what about the dry tree? I'm not trying to boil I'm trying to wake up to understand. <clears throat> There's only one word, and that's a revealed word the prophet bought us. He's telling us right here. And he said, now listen, you're, <clears throat> you're a part of this. this. This is what we're talking about, Messiah. Now listen, everything comes from the head. <clears throat> Children come from the loins. Adam, Eve, Abraham, Isaac, down the line. But God's children come from the head. Thoughts. Seed. You follow? Do you follow? Then where is life? It's in the head. Then has the head appeared? You tell me the head hasn't appeared. There's something wrong with you. What does the body do when the head appears? It follows the head. Amen. Right out of the ground. <clears throat> right out of the graves. <clears throat> right out of immortality. Right out of unbelief. It follows the head. Because that's where life is. Life isn't any place but in the head. Where does word come from? Out of the mind. You see out of the mouth. No, it doesn't. No. Got to come out of the mind. <clears throat> See? Okay. Messiahs, Christinas. <clears throat> That's what we are. All right. Let's go to Ephesians 1. 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed with all spirits and blessed in heavenly places, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. <clears throat> we were already in him. Then what he was and is, we have to be in our measure. Because the only difference lies in what? He was the only begotten, the only one of a kind. <clears throat> As he was in the explicit image of God, we are in his image. What is the difference? There isn't any image to image. What's the difference? It's God doing it. I got no problem. I like it. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians, the fourth chapter. And we see verses 6 and 7. Where are we going to go? Listen. And because you are sons, you don't become sons. You are sons. You don't get the Holy Ghost and thereby become a son. You don't get the Holy Ghost unless you are a son. <clears throat> Blessing of God does not come upon anybody but a son. Abraham said, oh, Lord, he said, if I don't have a son, he said, this Eliezer gets everything I got. He said, hold it, boy, you're going to have a son. And out of your own loins. <clears throat> but notice where the son came from to get to Abraham's loins. It came out of God's head. Headship, life. Word. <clears throat> Ishmael came along because... Uh, <clears> oh, <throat> Sarah got all messing around. She types the church. Poor old, nice old girl, but a complete mess. She's going to try to work things out for God. Church always works things out for God. Can never stand still. He couldn't stand still. First church couldn't stand still. Can this church stand still? Ha! I don't want to laugh in your face, but I'm going to tell you one thing. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. <clears throat> it's tough. It's not easy. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now how in the world could God who sent forth his spirit <clears throat> into his son do give any, anybody outside of a direct descendant of God that spirit <clears throat> that puts him in the position that he's supposed to be not to qualify, but to, he's already qualified, to manifest being that part of the body, which is another Christ, so to speak, another Messiah. In his own, in his own measure of grace now. <clears throat> Always watch the language. I never put anybody on par even with the prophet. And the prophet's not on par with Jesus. We're looking at the economy of God, which we call the trickle-down. Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. <clears throat> 
And a lot of those folk were terribly messed up too at the times. Now, let's go to John 1. Now, let's see in John 1, 12 and 13. It says, But as many as received him, he, uh, to them gave he the authority to become the sons of God, or to be the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. <clears throat> now notice, it says here, they were not born of blood. That's where Brother Branham got his saying. From the scripture, the man has the hemoglobin. A blood cell. And science doesn't believe it. But science doesn't even know what it's talking about. Who carries the genes, the chromosomes, I mean, that produce a male or a female? It's not in the woman. She's got an X chromosome and so is he, but she can't produce a male because he's got the <clears throat> because that's a Y chromosome. There's an offset. It doesn't matter. It's one of the two. <clears throat> I think the X that both have the same and Y is where the male has it. Now, let's get this flat. When the egg comes down from the ovary, it simply is guided by the channels of nature, not of itself. Attaching itself to the womb, it is the sperm that edges its way toward it where the life is. That's what Brother Brandon was talking about. Try to cage it any way you want it. I thought of this for years. The answer just came the other day. <clears throat> he never told a lie. His language wasn't so great at times, but these guys, so-called scientists, make me sick. I'm not interested. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, sexual desire, nor of the will of man, say, so I'm going to plan to have one, but of God. <clears throat> They're the sons of God. That's why in the beginning was the word. It lets you know where the life is. It's in the mind. It's in the head, and headship is God. <clears throat> and when headship comes, it's life. To what? He came to bring life to the bodies that were here in sin and all. To reform, to restore, recreate nature. It's not going to be different. It's just redeemed. And then it stepped up. Don't get any crazy ideas about a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the Father said, I'm going to just do this and do that. And they said, yes, yes, yes. And then they said, I'm sorry, I boo-booed. Now, how are we going to get these poor folks saved? Well, it says the Son, I'll volunteer. That left the Holy Spirit out just a little, didn't it? <clears throat> you know, how stupid can you get? The Bible lays it out here. But who's going to believe it? Eight people that made the ark. You know how they made it? Because generically, there is one perfect man. Noah. And he took the seven in. And there's a perfect one that came down in the form of the Holy Ghost and the pillar of fire. And he's going to take seven church ages in to the millennium. Everyone generically perfect. No serpent seed, no mixture, no nothing. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's enough to just... <clears throat> even make the devil repent, isn't it? Look at Hebrews, the second chapter. He's not going to repent, though, don't worry. Judas couldn't repent. That's the son of perdition. We'll talk about him tomorrow, maybe. All right, 2, 9 to 13, but we see Jesus made a little more in the angels. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every, not man, but for every son. The word man should be in italics, not in the Greek. For it became him. Notice, it became him. It became him. And to him. So what was becoming to him, he became. <clears throat> the becoming God. Even the, he, I, I was so happy to know the, 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 the rabbis understand the becoming God. Protestant Christians know nothing. It's a pity. For it became of whom were all things, by whom were all things, and bringing many sons to glory to make the captain their salvation perfect through suffering. For, for both he that sanctified and they were sanctified are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. <clears throat> saying, I'll declare thy name <clears throat> unto the brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. What do you want? Because you are sons. You say, that's a great mystery. Right, it's a great mystery. Men probed at it. Some believed it. But the prophet set it on fire by vindication. <clears throat> you can say, I, I just don't think I am. Well, that, that's, you see, you're adding to a word or taking away right there. <clears throat> Okay, 
Hebrews 12. Notice, 7, 8. If you endure ch chastening, training, God deals with your sons, for whose son is he whom the Father doesn't train? Chase it. But if you don't, without chastisement, wherever we're all partakers, then you're illegitimate. <coughs> and you're not sons. <coughs> you notice that Ishmael couldn't take it. Cain couldn't take it. Illegitimate. Watch over here now, 1 John. The third chapter, <coughs> 1 to 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world know, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew not him. <coughs> what was he, the only begotten son? What are we sons? Do you think they're going to know us? No way. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it hath never yet come into existence what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, the presence, that's the appearing. When he came down in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, that's the time we're going to be like him because that's the time we see him as he is. <clears throat> that's the time when God manifests himself, when the church comes to a knowledge of truth according to what I read in Ephesians, which is the same thing that Paul mentioned in the same understanding but different words to give you a complete picture is when the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge him comes on down and you begin to know him. For the first time. <clears throat> for the first time. For the first time, the true revelation and its reception in the presence of God is truly fulfilled. It wasn't in Paul's day. Uh -uh, they couldn't come to the knowledge of the truth. They couldn't do it. <clears throat> it is this age that does it. And this age is wretched, miserable, naked, blind, and doesn't know. It. And the little people, eight people, make the ark. And the ark is, signifies the rapture on this condition, that it goes above all the tribulation, which is water, and it floats over it all and comes back safely to take over the land. No, no, listen, brother, sister, you're not losing anything except, <clears throat> except sin. Now let's go to <clears throat> Romans 11 chapter. Romans 11. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right? 36. And here's what it says. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Now, with Christ as chief, the great son, only begotten the prince of the king, and him in the midst of his brethren, all things. So well, I know that God is of, uh, Christ is of God, but you see, it would take a terrible stretch of the imagination to make me believe that I'm of God. That's exactly true, but this is no time for imagination. <clears throat> this is a time, in the Bible, the word reasoning in scripture is called imaginations. It's reasonings. This is a time that reasonings, or what a person imagines, is brought under control in captivity <clears throat> to the place of the reception, the receptivity and reception of the word of Almighty God, that all things are for him and through him and to him. Now, where does this come from? This comes from the fact of the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? In other words, who stuffed God's head with these things? God stuffed his own head with these things. Man didn't do it. <clears throat> Paul got this from God. Or who hath first given him? And it shall be recompensed unto him again. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's go back to Revelation chapter 21. I think I'm going to close off here because there's no point in going trying to go beyond it. This is page number one with six to go. <clears throat> this is the tough part. 21, 1 to 8. And I saw a new heaven and new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He, shall, he will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself shall be with them, be their God. And God will wipe away all trees from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor, nor sorrow, nor crying, neither any more pain. The former things have passed away. And he said, He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. <clears throat> and he said unto me, Write, for these words are true. 
And he said to me, it is done. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I'll give to him this thirst of fountain of water of life freely. Now, what is this one here? That's in Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5. That's the one sitting on the throne says that. This, all this great panorama has gone before. All, it's all over now. This great kaleidoscopic scene, kaleidoscope, what do you want to call it, <clears throat> is all over. And John is looking now at the tail end. And I'll give to him that's the thirst of the fountains of the water left freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. Now who's going to be the overcomer? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you, there's only one way to overcome. You're not going to do it on your own. to care who you are. You've got to have faith in the faith of Christ. You and I don't get this by our faith. It's by the faith of Christ himself. It was his faith that brought this around. <clears throat> it was his rapport with the Father. It was his understanding. It was his glory that he had, and he's got again. And he's standing right in it. That's how he's mediator. And he said, I'm going to bring him in. Now, if you can believe that and believe what's transpired in your day, <clears throat> you've got faith in the faith of Jesus because Jesus gave this to John. And John was a scribe. And he said, this is my faith. Now, do you believe what's been revealed to him? <clears throat> so that's the thing that counts. Don't, don't say no. Don't be fearful. No fearful person is going to make it. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I'll be his God and he'll be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murder and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake with burning fire and brimstone, which is the second day. Now he takes you right up to New Jerusalem. <clears throat> all right, now who's going to control New Jerusalem? Messiah. Who's going to be with him? The bride. What's she? Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, mind of his mind. Word of his word, life of his life. <clears throat> what is she? Messiah to make up the body. In other words, there is positively a genetic and a generic God people. And of the highest order, which is Christ, the Prince of Peace on the throne. And all the little princes and princesses, so to speak. Little princesses, call them that. <clears throat> Taking the feminine for the bride. All will be there with him. And as Eve came out of Adam, and poor woman, she was the mother of all living and just messed the whole thing up. She should have been only the mother of one people. And you know something? Our mother, which is New Jerusalem, gives birth only to one strain. She does not give birth to multiple strains or a wrong strain. It is all of God. <clears throat> so we see we laid our foundation here. Is then it wrong for Adam to say we are Messiah? It's positively not. For him to say otherwise would be, would be a travesty. <clears throat> would, be, would be against the scripture. It would be the same to say we're not bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. It would not say we're members of him. It would deny the very word of God that says we're going to be like him. For as we bear and born the image of the earthy, we're now going to bear the image of the heavenly. <clears throat> and those that die will go strictly to the theophonic form, the spirit body. Now, if our good sister, which I'm sure she was, Sister Chatterton, <clears throat> she was ready to go. She, in fact, she was very calm and very beautiful. She was a very delightful person. I was utterly amazed at the quietness of her voice when she said, oh, she said, they're keeping me. I don't have life support instruments on me. She said, there's no life support. She said, they're letting me die with dignity, as they call it. <clears throat> they gave her morphine. She didn't even need it. But passing away... Where is she today? There's only one place she could be. He that confesseth me before men, I'll also confess before my Father which is in heaven. <clears throat> you know, it's a rugged road this we hold. It's a rugged way we go. Because it means taking everything out of our minds, pulling them up like weeds, because that's all they are anyway. This is the time for the weeds to get bundled and burned. So it's a good thing to let the divine reaper come in. <clears throat> And reap the minds. Circumcise the minds. Getting down to the heart. Oh, listen. Don't you be so afraid of the fact that you have some problems within yourselves. I know they're to be reckoned with. But that's not what counts. You could come to the place where you had no problems in yourself and be a million miles off the word. 
<clears throat> it is not that we're trying to get a perfection. That we have something to do with in the understanding that we can figure it, work with it, promote it. That's not it, although there's an element of truth there. The big thing is to accept the revelation of this hour. To accept it in the faith in which it was given, which is a vindicated faith. And to say this thing, look, nobody ever proved anything as far as I know. But as far as I know, there's nothing that'll touch this with a hundred foot pole. So if I'm gone and I missed it, I'll miss it with this. That's what the disciples said. You know something? When Jesus died, most walked off. When he came back, they still couldn't. But you know something? At Pentecost, it was a different story. They were one body with one spirit. <clears throat> we'll never have another Pentecost where the bride comes together to have one spirit. The bride is a scattered people everywhere. But there's one spirit, and that one bride is coming together regardless with the one spirit. And there will be a people, if there ain't a number of 500, I care less. That's not the point. There will be a people who believe this word. And they'll say, live or die, sink or swim. Who do people say is right? I don't care who says who's right. William Branham was the one man that had evidence. What do you mean evidence? Just exactly what I said. I don't expect you to take it, but it's what I'm going to stand on. Well, we just may have to cut your head off. Well, that isn't going to prove anything. Not going to prove anything. Never has and never will. For they that take the sword will perish by it. And the great Catholic Church, God's already said, re return unto her double what she did. 68 million Protestants. 86 million. No, it's 60,000 Huguenots at one time. It isn't just Catholics. Lutherans persecuted the <clears throat> Westerns. Western persecuted the Pentecostals. And you know something? When they called Pentecost the devil, they died. When Pentecost calls this the devil, they die. Or if they refuse, it's all over. No more change. Where do you stand tonight? Are you standing as a Messiah yet? We'll talk more about it. Let's take it right down the line. But can you see your lineage? That's the thing that counts. Can we see our lineage? Can we see exactly who we are in the eyes of God? It doesn't matter anybody else's eyes. <clears throat> and the evidence of being in the body, which is by the baptism with the Holy Ghost, is only one way. And that's by believing the word of the hour. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to just stop here now. Go into communion service. It's always so good just to talk about these things, to refresh our minds, because, God, we have to admit, Heavenly Father, that our minds need refreshing every single day concerning our lineage. <clears throat> just what you said, so many people look in the Word, in that mirror, then turn away, not remembering what manner of people they are. And, Lord, we've been looking in the Word tonight to see that we are the children of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, Messiah, as Brother Branham said. We're not going to pull away from it. Knowing it doesn't mean we've got some special place as though we are going to tell you anybody else how to do things. This means our special place is you've counted us worthy. Showing our position in you. Bone of bone, flesh of flesh, spirit of spirit. Now, Father God in heaven, relying upon you to make those things which the prophet taught us be really real. To come to a life in us, Lord, where everything else just is by the board. Live, die, sink, or swim. What does it matter? Eat, sleep, who cares really? We've come into the alignment with God. The stars are all lined up, hallelujah. And when you're in alignment, there's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a rapture. We believe that, Lord, tonight, and we thank you for helping us to see truth. May we see more as we progress. We'll give you the honor and the glory because we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. This time we're going to take the supper of the Lord. So those that are, <clears throat> are uh, 
going to serve if you'll come forward. Give me a chance to read the scripture here. And uh, <clears throat> instantly go into <clears throat> the service, communion and foot washing. It's so good to see all you people tonight come from a distance. Really appreciate you coming. <clears throat> I don't preach harder or any better because you're here. I just love to see it. it. Makes it exciting for everybody to know we got friends that come from a distance to worship with us. Something like the kind of like the wise men coming. <clears throat> All right. We'll get here in the uh, 13th chapter of John. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas the scared Simon's son to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God, and he went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. In other words, there was a certain aspect of Christ's life that was now finished and go into a final phase. And no matter what happened, this was it. So now watch in the final phase what he does. After he poured water in the basin, began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with the towel where he was girded. Then he cometh to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And now Peter was trying to be kind and, and right in what he was doing. He wasn't mouthing off here. He, he really meant that Jesus should not do such a thing, you know, really, because he wasn't worthy. And Jesus answered, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Then notice Peter's response overboard again. Simon Peter said, Lord, not my feet only then, but also my hands and my head. <clears throat> See, he knew that he really needed something. And Jesus said, He that is washed needeth not save to, see, needeth not save to wash his feet but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all, for he knew who should betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. In other words, Judas, remember Jesus' prayer was, sanctify them by thy word, thy word is truth. He said, they are sanctified by the word that I gave them. Judas was not sanctified. He was not clean. So therefore, Judas could not take the word. He couldn't take the word of the hour. <clears throat> he couldn't take the word concerning Messiah. Couldn't do it. They can't take the word concerning the same one today. They can't do it. See, there's no way. How are they going to be clean? It's by the washing of the water by the word. So after he had washed their feet <clears throat> and taken his garment and was set down again, he said to them, Know ye not what I have done? You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, because I am Master and Lord. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Now, what is he saying here? He's saying, look, the washing of the water of the word has made the people pure, clean, and simple, every single one. So therefore, every one of you now has the same ability that I have to give this word. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> All one in the word can therefore wash each other's feet because we are clean before the Lord. And he said, now look, this is a sign right there. If it was a sign back there, it's a sign today when Messiah is in our midst again, when the Holy Spirit's here, and the person of, of Christ himself in the form of a pillar of fire <clears throat> is here. How much more then do we recognize that truth? We recognize the truth of the washing of the water by the word, an example to each one of us to understand that that is the truth of this hour and to do it continuously, to continuously give the word. He said, Verily I said, The servant is not greater than the Lord, neither he that sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy to do them. I, not, I speak not to you, of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture might be, may be fulfilled. He that eat the bread of me had lifted up his heel against me. Hi, because he couldn't take the word. <clears throat> I've told you all along, if this church has trouble, it's for one thing. You think you're taking the word and you're not. Now that's a tough statement to say. Some of you better listen to me. Because I've been watching, I've been listening, I know what I'm talking about. And I'm not here to run you down, I'm here to tell you, hey, look, if you think you're kidding, you're not kidding me, how do you think you're kidding God? Now let's understand. Let's understand. 
You're kidding yourselves. According to what I understand, try to get across, because everything to me is word. There's nothing else. God is in his word. He is not in his holy temple. He's not in his holy church. He is not in this. He is not in that. He is in his word. You want life? You got to have that word. And it's got to be headship word. And it's going to do something to somebody and people. Maybe some of you wonder why I can do certain things. I do them because of that word. And you say, oh, Brother Vail, if that's the case, you shouldn't do other certain things. You wait till tomorrow morning, you're going to find out whether it's true or not. You come back and find out. I'm not being a hypocrite standing up here, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite, and I'm going to tell you the truth. There's one thing that does it, that is this word, because there's life in that word. And that word in you and me, brother, sister, makes a difference. And you can't hide. And I can't hide. Oh, come on, brother, sister, come on. Come on, there's not time for fooling. Don't let the cares of this world and all these things choke it out. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Listen, foot washing is a very important thing. <clears throat> it acknowledges the great washer by water, the word. It acknowledges I'm accepted. And acknowledges the acceptation based on the word, the servant not great in his Lord. You ought to do it. You see, Satan won't do that. Satan will miss foot washing every time because he wants to be greater than his Lord. <clears throat> he doesn't like it. Now, he said, I told you things that come to pass, you'll know when they do come to pass. And then next thing Jesus did was he gave them the Lord's Supper which is what we intend to do at this time, not talk about it because we've talked about it many, many other times. So the brethren just come up here now. Those are going <clears> to <throat> take the song service. Those are going to play, what have you. And the, the rest of us will please stand at this time, will you? And will you start coming from the back? Soon as I finish praying, will you start coming from the back? Heavenly Father, once more we want to pray. Sanctify these emblems, O gracious, eternal God, to the purpose where they were attended. Not, O God, that they in themselves will mean anything of themselves, but because they mean something in the divine, the word, the command of God. Then, Lord, we doing it will mean something to us. We're, hope, we're not just hoping, we're counting on it, Father. But otherwise, it's just, it's just emotion. And I do not see any motion you went through. I do not see one thing in Scripture. I do not see one thing today that is just No way, shape, and form. This is not just emotion. This is not just a passing time. No, it's just emotions. But in there lies the truth of what you said here, O oh God. We're showing something. We're believing something. And then, Lord, if we can't do it in good conscience and good faith, I pray in the next 30 seconds there won't be one person who cannot do it. So, Father, forgive each one and help each one, we pray. We stand here with every person here tonight, Lord, to have a clean heart and a clear soul and, a, and also an obedience of faith unto the word of that respect, O oh God, to you and, and your word which you dwell in and to each one, Lord, in whom we trust there is. All of us, Lord, looking forward to that day. We're coming together, working together, O oh God. We shall be, Lord, approved of you, not approved of men which we care not. Bless the emblems now, we pray again as we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Singing the hymns of glorious praise, number 201. 201 and can it be? <clears throat> <clears throat> 